On September 14th, 1901, at 3 p.m., Theodore Roosevelt took the oath of office unexpectedly in the library in this home behind me. Join me today on Walk With History as we talk about the McKinley assassination in Buffalo, New York. I'm at 30 Fordham Drive in Buffalo, New York, and this is the site where President McKinley was shot on September 6th, 1901. So of course the Pan American Exposition is going on here at the time and it's been going on for a couple months. It's a World's Fair. So a World's Fair is a large international exhibition. They're designed to showcase the achievements of the nations. They're usually three to six months. Even today, there's things built by World's Fairs that we still see, like the Eiffel Tower or the Space Needle in Seattle, Washington. Those were built by World's Fairs, and they still stand today. So this was a World's Fair in Buffalo, New York. It was called the Pan American Exposition. So if you remember in that movie, uh, Meet Me in St. Louis. Me in St. Louis. They're going to the World's Fair in St. Louis in 1904. So that was, of course, three years after this one that's in Buffalo. The things that were on display here for the World's Fair was the, the first x-ray machine. Thomas Edison had built all this light exhibits because of the light bulb. And so at night, they had all these lights going on. So there was like a bunch of different buildings. There was an electric tower. There was Court of Fountains. And of course, there was the Temple of Music. Temple of Music was just a hall dedicated to live performances. And that is where President McKinley was receiving guests and people, which he loved to do on September 6th, 1901. Uh, only one building from the World's Fair, from this World's Fair, from this Pan American Exposition exists. It's used for the Buffalo History Museum today. You know the song from It's a Wonderful Life? Buffalo, Buffalo girls, girls, won't you, won't you come out tonight? Won't you come out tonight? Won't you come out tonight? That's about Buffalo, New York. That's about people coming into port in Buffalo, New York, the sailors, and wanting to go out with the girls in Buffalo. So on September 6th, 1901, he was greeting his public. His personal secretary had tried to remove it from his calendar twice, <laughs> and he put it back on. And he actually says to his secretary, why should, why should I be afraid? No one is going to wish to hurt me. You're kidding. At 4 p.m., he's shaking hands, and Leon Shalgas, who's concealing a weapon with a handkerchief and his Secret Service, because everyone's hot and they're kind of wiping their faces with handkerchiefs, they don't think anything of it that he has a handkerchief over his hand. And at point blank range, he fires two shots into his abdomen. He goes straight into surgery. Of course, they don't use the new x-ray machine that's exhibited here at the World's Fair, and they don't use new lights that are also exhibited at the World's Fair. So they're using just sunlight to do surgery. They get one bullet out, the other one they can't find. So they stitch him back up the best they can. Theodore Roosevelt comes here that day. McKinley starts to feel better and look better. McKinley doesn't want to raise fear of the country, tells Theodore Roosevelt to go. Unfortunately, by Saturday, September 14th, he's deteriorated. He dies that morning at 2.15 a.m. in the morning. And Roosevelt has been informed as he's on vacation with his family in the Anirodex to get back here as quick as possible. He gets here to Buffalo at about 1.30 p.m. He doesn't even have a coat and hat. He has to borrow them from people. He goes straight to the Milburn house to, to be with Mrs. McKinley and to give her his condolences. And then he walks from Milburn house back to where he's gonna take the oath of office at his friend's house at um, the Wilcox house. And that's where he's gonna take the oath of office right after 3 p.m. He becomes the 26th president of the United States. The third president at that time to become president because of assassination. Lincoln, then Garfield, McKinley is third. And of course, we'll have Kennedy be the fourth. So this is the site of the Milburn house where President McKinley stays. On September 5th, he stays at this home. He delivers a speech at the Temple of Music. My fellow citizens, recent 
it and imposed upon the patriotic people of this country. And then stays overnight, goes to Niagara Falls on the 6th. and then receives people at the Temple of Music the next day where he is shot. This is the place he will die on September 14th, 1901 at 2.15 in the morning. It no longer exists. It's just a parking lot now with a school. When Theodore Roosevelt gets back into town on September 14th, this will be his first stop. He didn't think it was appropriate to take the oath of office here. And it's from this walk, from this house, down the street to the Wilcox house, where he thinks about taking on the weight of the presidency of the United States of America. And this is where he will take the oath of office. And this is now a museum at the National Park Service. So this is where, as he's walking, he knows that he's going to be president. The weight of the nation is on him. He also wants to instill some strength in the country because they will be greatly impacted by this death. President McKinley was a well-liked president, so his death will come as a shock to the country, and Theodore Roosevelt wants to just make sure America feels confident in its new president. Right through the front door and to the right is the library. That's the location. About 40 people will be in attendance, no photographers, and there, therefore there's no photo of his inauguration. Wilcox House is actually the lone surviving structure from the Buffalo Barracks compound built because of tensions between the U.S. and Canada in 1839. In 1845, it becomes a private residence and Wilcox will move in the end of the 19th century. He's a lawyer and friend of Teddy Roosevelt since they were both on a committee to create a park to protect Niagara Falls in 1880. Teddy Roosevelt travels by train and horse to reach Buffalo on September 14th, and Wilcox will give him a coat and hat since all he has is camping clothes. Comes in through this front door and walks into this library here. Why is there a lot? Well, that's called the window seat. Yeah. And no photographs exist of this inauguration. <laughs> so right where that table is, right there, is where Theodore Roosevelt took the oath of office to become the 26th president of the United States. You heard he had a meeting with his cabinet and then after that he small library. Get some fresh air. He walks outside the secretary of war elegy room. 40 people were in the room with him. He probably goes into the next room which will be going into shortly. So I'm sitting at a recreation of Theodore Roosevelt's desk in the White House. So this is what his office would have looked like in the White House. He has a picture of Lincoln across from him and his lamp, and you can do some interactive things on the desk as well. So it's pretty cool. From this house, President Roosevelt will write some proclamations, but his very first letter is to Booker T. Washington. So he wants to make sure that he is really doing what he says about making a better place for African Americans and making, reaching out to the South. One of the very first things he does as president inviting him to Washington, D.C., to the White House. President McKinley is buried in Canton, Ohio, at Westlawn Cemetery, the end of September. Shalgas is tried and sentenced to death and executed on October 29, 1901. The Wilcox will live in the Wilcox House till the 1930s. It then becomes a restaurant, and in the 1960s, the National Park Service will take it over as a museum dedicated to the M McKinley assassination and Theodore Roosevelt. And after only serving seven months as vice president for McKinley for his second term, Theodore Roosevelt becomes the 26th president of the United States. Thank you for joining me on this walk of history.